All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, referencing a publication in The Guardian about seven years ago, Nigeria's rallied behind the All Progressive Congress as the APC. It changed, uh, and it's changed mantra to elect President Muhammadu Buhari as a rebuke of the maladministration of incumbent uh, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan and his People's Democratic Party. It was the first time a party in power and a sitting president had failed at the polls and expectations were really high on the incoming um, president or government. Now, but seven years down the line, even Buhari's loyalists are scandalized by the ineptitude worsened by the unparalleled nepotism and <laughs> sectarianism. Now, by sheer negligence of police and armed force, uh, forces, banditry, kidnapping, terrorism, and other shades of criminality are wider than ever before. Now, economic woes are soaring and inflation have also worsened um, poverty as uh, uh, as worsened poverty, rather, as more Nigerians dropped below the poverty line in the last um, seven years. It is indeed a country worse off than it was in 2015. And given a National Assembly that could not be bothered, Nigerians are looking forward to a fresh start in 2023, which is why today we are asking, what leadership should Nigerians be expecting? What do we really need in terms of leadership? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS, or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Weisho, Africa 1 with the hashtag Weisho. My guest is doing sign of the cross. Don't worry. <laughs> You'll be all right. But let me quickly hear your thoughts, and I'll bring in our guest. What do you think, right? Because as it is now, mm -hmm. and as, see, this conversation, I'll keep having it because so that tomorrow when they say, what happened, what happened, I will tell you that mm -hmm. I said it, oh, we don't need a Messiah, oh. we don't need a Messiah, oh, but hey, but what do you Messiah. think, what, what, what do you think um, the, the, the leadership structure uh, that, that would suit what currently Nigeria is facing, what kind of leadership do we well, really need? I don't know about the structure, I know about the character traits of the person okay. if to if we want to answer this question then we have to ask what is leadership who is a leader what are the qualities of a good leader so if i would name just only three i would say number one a leader must be able to influence mm. you understand and inspire his or her followers so if you have a leader or leadership that is not inspiring the followers and that's no leadership a leader must have empathy that's the able to understand you understand the plight of their people or their followers and then the third point i would like to bring is integrity this is non-negotiable it's one of a must you know character trait that this leader must possess so if you look at this then we'll now make up the person who a leader is supposed to be then we can start thinking about the kind of structure that have, we can okay. look at yeah let me hear your thoughts Noma. well i was told the line of uh money because uh leadership in nigeria even though um, you were saying about some, somewhere in between democracy. Yeah. And I think part of the qualities that I believe Nigerians need is transparency. Mm -hmm. This is something that has been grossly lacking in the crop of leaders that we've had so far. And then the three C's, I would like to put it that way, commitment, character, and competence. Mm -hmm. We're not just looking for somebody who wants to just answer that they're a leader from the example that you show, the things that you do, because it is what the people see that they can emulate, that they yes, can follow. Exactly. That's so if you're an example of what you, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. if you're an, an example of what you say, and you're saying that this is the direction that will lead us in a certain, to be able to attain certain um, results yeah, that will be beneficial that. to us as a nation, mm -hmm. then it can help. So when we find leaders that are towing this line of transparency, of having character, the right kind of character, and the competence and commitment to helping the people harness their human capital, their resources mm -hmm. to be able to gain value yeah. that can be com uh, commanded across the globe. Yeah, then agree. we are heading in a right. direction very, very that very will now, make us global. I think so. Ola Dele Ogunlan is the program chairman of Project I Am Nigeria. Program I Am Nigeria seeks to challenge the status quo and engage Nigerians to be the solution to our numerous problems essentially by inspiring one another to accept and assume responsibility for the future of our country. 
This resolve is anchored on a quote that says, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Now, he is no stranger to the house because he's been here a couple of times and he's joining us again live tonight. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Oladele. Thank you very much. And, uh, the handsome Oladele. Yeah, I, I was going to say that the picture that you sent in just didn't do Doesn't justice. Doesn't do justice. I, I think you should go take a professional <laughs> headshot photo. So okay. a, lot of, a lot has changed. <laughs> Maybe he's enjoying more now. Leadership issues have... <laughs> But thank you so much for having this conversation with us. I mean, we don't take it for granted when we invite guests like you and you give us a yes. It tells us that, you know what, people are still ready, you know, and really yeah, passionate about the driving the right conversations that Nigeria needs at this time. Absolutely. And that's why the conversation, the topic is geared towards the need. So it's not about what we want as a people. Yeah. What do we need is completely different, right? So that when we're looking towards the 2023 elections, these are the parameters that would use, you know, in electing our leaders, right? So if you were to analyze and looking at the states that Nigeria currently is, what do you think the leadership, um, the leadership style or the leadership structure, or whatever it is, should look like that would really bring Nigeria out of this quagmire? Okay. Um, thank you for having me again, even though you rarely ever give one an option to say no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. Um, it, it also helps some of us to actually come out. Mm, yeah. Instead of sitting behind the key and then just... Typing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to play around what you've asked um, because there's so much. And, you know, over time when we say these things, they begin to sound like cliches. Mm. But we will just have to find a way to keep saying them. Because um, I believe when they say hearing and hearing and hearing again, yeah. you know, pound it in, mm -hmm. and then we will we'll, we'll one day hear. But the truth is, the leader must love Nigeria yeah. and Nigerians. Mm -hmm. A leader, our leader, must mm -hmm. love the people. And you know, yesterday I had an interesting conversation with uh, a, a couple of friends, and so let me start with that. Uh, it's a py yeah pyramid. Um, so when you draw that pyramid, at the peak of the pyramid, whoever is at the top of that pyramid, everyone can see. Mm. Now, whoever is at the top of that pyramid becomes like a model. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, we have to be intentional about who we put at the top of that pyramid mm -hmm. at all times because that becomes the model. And so we have our children looking to that model. So if we have put the model up there, why do we frown at our children trying to be like the model? Mm. So something is wrong. There's a disconnect somewhere. You know, so that is, I'd like us to start looking at that, you know, it, because it's very important. Um, we're at it again, and we should be looking at the type of people we want to put up there. Because then if our children, you know, it's like me saying to you, I'm not asking you to answer, but it's like me saying your children will become like our leaders. Mm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So it's our responsibility to be able to say amen. Oh, yeah. mm. You know, we, do, we can't just leave it. So that's why I'm saying that it, it may sound like a cliche, but we have to keep saying it. Mm. What does Nigeria need in a leader? We need someone that is exemplary. We need mm. exemplary leadership. Mm -hmm. We do. We need good governance in Nigeria. Yeah. We need someone or people that can efficiently manage our resources. And we need someone to redeem our moral core. Mm. Mm. That's what we need. Now, what type of person? Okay, so we need a person that has a personal conviction. You know, someone that is prepared to champion these things. Someone that is ready to even lay down his life. Yeah. And not, yeah. I mean, someone must yeah. be ready to, yeah. to die mm -hmm. for this country. Yeah. Now, uh, okay. Now, <laughs> we need someone that is also value driven. Mm. Someone that has moral standards of yes. integrity. Yeah. Someone that holds 
patriotism Time. as very Time. important. Yeah, I mean, you can't begin to say that you are patriotic and the slight cash you have, mm. you take it out. Country. No, not out of the country. You mm. invest yeah. it outside. Yeah. The you know, so, you know, because I, I, I sat there and I was just putting down a few things because I, I don't want to, because I know you'll soon end this thing now, and I want to be able to say as much as I can. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need someone that is courageous, someone that is dynamic, someone that can actually envision. You know, so not the same old, not someone that just does a plug and play. Yeah. We need someone that has respect for the dignity and the rights of every Nigerian, a reformist leader. Nigeria needs someone hmm, that is high and strong, emotionally intelligence quotient. Yeah. We've taken too many things for granted. We, it's as if we don't even care. You know, we need someone that is equipped enough to, to, to be his own master. Yes, agreed, you're going to have a team to work with, mm -hmm. but you must be that someone that has a brain. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm, Functioning. Mm. Decision-making. Yes. And you must be energetic. Mm. You must be well-connected. You must be able to pull from within and outside the country. Mm. And then, you, whether you like it or not, you've got to be youthful. Mm. You must be able mm -hmm. co to connect. You've got to be able to connect with the young yeah. people. You know, and so, uh, you must have a teachable spirit. Because you're not always right. Yes. Yeah. So, you must be able to open up to new thinking, to innovation. You must be able to hear. You know, and that's really the... Um, one big challenge. And another very important thing, I picked that up, you must inspire confidence. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what it's like when your leader shows up? Mm. It gives you some confidence. Pride. It should give you that confidence. Sense of pride. Oh, mm. You know, and it, 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 I haven't felt that in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we need a leader that is tolerant. You know, that has empathy for the people. We need a leader that, yes, is also able to identify skill sets in people mm -hmm. and pull together. Resources. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of work to be a leader. We need to have a leader that can carry everyone along. Mm. You know, you know that has the capacity to get things done. But above all, very important, we need someone that at some point knows when to put politics aside and begin to face governance. Governance. Thank you. Money. Okay, um, <laughs> Oladele, you have said a lot. You know, while you were talking, I just felt like my blood was pumping faster because I always tell people I am Nigerian. Like when I say I'm Nigerian, I mean I'm Nigerian to my bones, to my blood. So when I hear people talk about Nigeria the way you have just talked, it just really gets me high. Mm. So you have talked about a lot of qualities. You've talked about everything we've talked about when we started talking. You've said so much more. And one thing I know is if you go for any leadership course, especially in very um, like Ivy League universities abroad, they teach you all these qualities. I have a friend right now that is in Harvard and everything you said, I've heard him say it and, you know, different things. So we have so many academians in Nigeria. We have people going abroad to learn a lot of things. So we have people who have been trained to possess all these qualities that you've just talked about. Why are we not seeing those people in front? The traits you just talked about are traits of a leader, not a follower, a leader. So we already have people that have been baked and ready. So why are they not coming out? Why are they not in front? What are we going to school for? Why are we getting all these degrees and getting all these trainings? And yet we don't come out to lead. It's very simple. We are aware. But we don't know. You know, if you listened, if you watched the video of the um, education minister, the Ghana education minister, he said yeah. something very profound. Yeah. You know, we are, we are framed to just hear and regurgitate. So he said he spoke, he spoke with the students and he said, any questions? And not one. Nothing. Mm. Because they are tutored. Tamed. It's, it's like slavery. Yeah, tamed. Mm. You know, to hear and then just regurgitate it and they hail you, you've passed. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, sadly, that's how a lot of us grew up. But the children now, oh they would God. ask you questions. Yes. And you must answer. Mm -hmm. I remember, okay, well, I'll say it. I remember there was once, um, my father and I were having a conversation. And he got to a point, you know, and he said, I'm your father. 
Mm. Okay? And that's the way we were brought up. Because we were brought up because to, to, to believe that the adult knows much more. Yeah. So he said, I'm your father. And at that point, was, I was not in a good place because I was tired of that attitude because that's the same thing oh, yeah. we see Force in governance yeah. or in leadership like, or in fine. rulership. Not to be questioned. Yeah, so I said mm. to him, I said, if that is it, then there's really no point having this conversation. conversation. No. And then I, I said to him, I said, and this is the reason why we go to school. To be able to communicate. So that we can learn, we can things. query things, we can ask questions. Oh, yes. So we all get better when yeah. we ask. Mm. You know? And uh, again, I don't know if this flows well, but you know, just now I was saying to you, so a circular went out, and by this evening the circular has been withdrawn. Mm. Imagine. So is it that we Somebody didn't discuss think. it. Did not you did process. That people are did doing things without questions. people thinking. You know, so do we query things before it goes out? The danger that people are failing oh. to see is that when you consistently act in that manner, it, it reduces the regard that mm. people have for your office. Mm. Yeah. And that's where we are today. Yes. You yeah. know what? Let's go on a very short break, right? When we come back from that break, we will continue the conversation. Mm. Stay with us. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we are discussing the leadership Nigerians need, and we have with us Ola Dele Ogunlala. Um, please remember you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three eight four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. Um, I'd like Noma to come in because I have a question that I would like to ask. You know, based off on the things that you have reeled out in terms of who we should be looking at, at the qualities, right? 2023 is around the corner. We cannot I run away from it. I was just going to say that. <laughs> so, so we need to we need to start right um, expanding the minds of young people. Um, because when you talk about an inspirational leader, you're talking about the charisma, you're talking about all of those things. And I'm thinking, okay, we already have the, the what's it called, the ballot paper. Like, I can see the ballot paper. I see the list of the people there. Who can I really point to to say that this is the kind of leader that Nigerians yeah. need yeah. at this time? Okay, so what you're saying <laughs> is that this conversation is coming after the fact. Mm. But it's okay. We, we will always learn from it and um, we'll get better. But you see, the problem we've always had is that we are constantly insisting on electing people that have built nothing. Okay? So when we do that, they get in there and build nothing. And then we, we ask questions, why? So there's a disconnect. Something is wrong with us. Yeah. You know, because... We don't even query these things. When was the last time we got truly involved to even ask questions, make demands? In all the weeks or maybe months that this process has started, have you really heard the right questions being asked? We're not issue-based. We're just going on things that are just, you know. And then I think by now we should be telling whoever it is that for this process, everybody... Somebody will tell me now that it's not, it's not constitutional. But everybody must come and speak to the people. Yeah. It's very important. You can't have people not show up. You know, it's, it's, it's enough of the nonchalant attitude it's to leadership and to, arrogant. And to the it's people. It's very arrogant. The people can no longer or should no longer be taken for granted. Mm. I hear in my head as I say that, I, I say, please, our people and that's because people we've not learned to query things we don't ask questions we take a lot of rubbish mm. and then we complain I, I think the time has come and i'm really scared because it might not give us notice mm. when this whole thing blows up enough because people just want to know it's it's tiring you know i, I don't know whether i can say, okay i'll say it in a very nice way i was talking to a friend today and um Remember, I'm sure you know about the 80,000 Naira car charge. Mm. Um, yes, yes, for the, <laughs> the setbacks in your houses. <laughs> yes, and also, apparently, I hear that the letters that went to event centers mm. talked about within 
the parking lot yeah oh so, wow. okay so i was talking to someone and the person was thinking about shutting down what? No, it doesn't make sense if i have 200 cars Pots or slots in and you're my going to be paying for each pay one of those. Eighty thousand, that's sixteen million. Or yes, so. per it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. You know, and so you, you begin you didn't to even wonder. Think through that thing. God, that's, that's what I'm saying. Mm. When you're doing things like that, you expect that there would be a public hearing. You expect that you bring um, stakeholders, stakeholders together. Yes. You know, you expect that people will talk. You know, and then you just wonder whether I, I, I kept asking myself today that am I am I not well? Hmm. Because you, what you would expect is that, okay, so we need to raise revenue or we need to raise money. And um, so why don't we have parking, um, parking lots that people actually pay to park? Absolutely. Or the, the setbacks or the parking sp spots outside of... Be made um, just meter them. Thank you. Hmm. You know, just make, it, make life easier. Yes. Make it tolerable for people. It's just, it's hard as it is already. But you know, so th these people that come up with these things, um, at the risk of even sounding, uh, what's that word now? Borrow me that English. <laughs> okay, at the risk of sounding whatever, it's really not, I will not blame the leader, but he will get the blame at the end of it because someone has to take responsibility. But you see, I blame the people that work with them because you see, some of these things may not get to them. Because it's that's why after all of these things come out, then they now withdraw these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Now today I'm hearing that, oh no, they said it's not for the cars in the, in, in the parking lot. But then what does within mean? That's another matter. <laughs> you know, so they're looking at it again. So it's, that should have come before. But even if you wanted to generate revenue as a leader, right, there are other ways. Like you rightly said, if you put, it, if you put a meter there, Somebody comes and parks there. It's no longer the responsibility of the owner of the property. So if I stay there 10 hours, I pay immediately, instantly. I might even make much more than 80000 at the end of the year. Yes. Right? So it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes I think that, you know, they put the cart before the horse. It's not even sometimes, most times. So they put the cart before the horse. And then, you know, when they have... When they have um, goofed. goofed, they now try to find a way to redeem themselves. But let I me hear Norma's question. They the cart before the horses. I think they just don't have the right people in the right places. Mm. That's all. So nobody's thinking. <laughs> Norma, please. Fact, no, sorry. Uh, nobody's uh, thinking through. They're through, thinking. Yes, they're nobody's thinking, thinking through. Yeah. She warned me about this show that I must yeah. always be positive. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's um, thinking through. Okay. Thank, <laughs> that, that's a good one. In fact, that was the major question I wanted to ask in the place of leadership that do we have the right kind of I mean elections are down the road do we have the right kind of leaders now but already it's like you said after the fact now i want to pay attention a little to the followers right is one thing to have is leaders or supposed leaders but you also need to have the right kind of followers so how do we begin to... Because it's out of these followers that we're going to have leaders in the future. Mm. And if we do not begin to groom them in a certain way, then we will have a reoccurrence of what we have in our reality today. So what do we need to begin to pay attention to? What do proposed leaders need to begin to pay attention to now? so that there's some kind of um, uh, continuity with the right kind of leadership, with the right kind of people in leadership. And what do we as followers or Nigerians need to begin to pay attention to if we want to see the right kind of leadership in our future? Okay, it's a process, okay. Um, I've always believed that Nigerians are timid. Mm. Nigerians are very timid. Nigerians, yeah, um, and I'll tell you why. Nigerians, if you put a law in place, Nigerians will quickly obey. No, but we like mm. enjoyment so much, so much that we don't want to be incarcerated. We, we, we like don't want anything opinions. to. But you see, Nigerians like are it. also so smart. They test they you. They still break mm. the law. Yeah, because they test you. Consequences, if there are no consequences for bad behavior, mm. then you're even putting everything in a worse of situation. Mm. There are no consequences. So, you see... Or they don't follow through consequences. Uh, That's the no same thing. There are no consequences. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, okay, so, um, I believe, I agree that uh, followership is also very key. But let's look at how we can deal with 
leadership which hopefully will dovetail into the right kind of fellowship, mm. even if it means that you fear your leaders. Yeah? Mm. But if we have the right crop of people as leaders, yeah, Nigerians will follow. Look, if yeah. you have a leader that believes in straight up transparency, do things right, I, I didn't want to say that, but you, you know, we had we always remember Adora Akoni, mm. Akoni, you know, whatever. Yes, the late Dora NAFTA. Akoni. You know, if you have a leader that does that, yeah. it begins to go down, it will trickle down. Absolutely. And before you know it, we're all, you know, someone that I worked with, Dora, said to me that she actually set people in the office against themselves. So I'm watching, you don't know, somebody's watching you. So when you mm. get to the office, everybody's behaving because you don't know if the person you're talking person to is the one watching. You know, so those are the kind of things we need to begin to do for ourselves. If it doesn't trickle down, it's not going to happen for now. Yeah. Because people have we've gone so way back into this badness. Mm. You know, badness don't even sound well, you know, badidity. So I was going to say, because I had said it earlier on, that, you know, we've always talked about democracy, autocracy in this, um, uh, on this table, right? Because hearing you speak, right, like, and you are right to say that Nigerians are like, you know, one-way traffic. If we see somebody that the head is correct, everybody's head will be correct. Just be correct. If you see somebody that because is going when left, they go abroad, their heads yes, are it's correct. Away. Yes, you know. So I mean, so what do we say around democracy and autocracy, right? I always believe. I mean, we always say that Uti says this all the time. We cannot survive in a democracy in this country. We need something yeah. in between yeah. a democracy and yeah. an autocracy because as it stands now, we the corruption has eaten too deep. So we really cannot have a leader that cannot take a stand it, yeah, at some point to say, you know what, I put my foot down, this so is how it's going to go. We can't just have a leader for the people by the people. We have a leader that will hold cane. Cane. Do you understand? Yeah. When he needs to hold cane, yeah. then he and now the, diplomacy when he needs to. But, but what are your thoughts? Yeah. You know? I, I, what, what are your thoughts? Do you I agree with that? I, honestly, um, things have gone really bad. Bad, yeah. yeah. So I don't see a leader with just the cane. Mm. working mm. unless we also put in place structures to tap into those um, issues of punishment mm. but i yeah. see if with the cane and i see if we have punishments that will be executed like death by firing squad for uh, no, no. <laughs> like if you do if you drive <laughs> if you drive in a certain way you pay a big fine mm. if you do this and people are actually caught and they have made to an pay. example mm. yes pe you people will change i remember when they started this wearing of seat belt mm. ah Everybody yeah. who wanted to pay money, so we yeah. all started wearing the seatbelt. Meanwhile, when we were growing up, it was hip to wear belts, so it was easy for us to flow into it. But a lot of people started wearing the belt because there are consequences. Yeah. In fact, let me tell you, yesterday I was just thinking to myself, why can't we, okay, it may sound wrong now, but hear me out. <laughs> why can't we just have um, something that says, okay, you're a policeman, hmm? If you are able to find someone that has broken the law or traffic, whatever, and you can, and we can, what's the word? We can prove that there's been an infraction. You get a star or mm. something. Mm. That star translates to something somewhere down the line. Mm. Yeah. You know? Or even citizens. Be proud of. So they are looking out for it because I want a star. A reward. One star might end up being a thousand naira. Mm. But the, it's not even about the money anymore. I got 10 stars at the end of this year because I was faithful in my duties. Mm. You've got to learn to begin to show people how to live mm. right. The carrot and stick. Like yeah, that. because... Yeah. Uh, a lot of noise is made every day, but there's nobody to enforce those things. So things just happen. Yeah. And I believe that the more you make those noises and you can't enforce, you water down your authority. Yeah, mm. yeah it's mm. true. It's like a, a parent lot. that keeps mm. threatening their child. Exactly. And, and then they never whole. carry out the punishment. Was, the child is not going I was, to be um, I, I used to, in my former life, I used to be in a daycare center. And so a child messed up. I said, why did you do that? And this was the first thing he did. But out his hand. But out his hand. Because it stopped, was used to. Yeah, stop talking too much. Just do, mm -hmm. beat me, let me mm. go. Mm. So that's no longer punishment for that child. So it's he will take, yeah. That. You know, and so that's when you hear people say, okay, if I do this, what's the punishment? 10,000 naira, then I do it. Mm. You know, it's not, you know, so we've got to look at these things critically. And then it's always good for a leader to interact. 
Yeah. It's always good to find know, the pulse. I know there's a certain, mm. I don't want to mention his name now, he was governor. He spent a lot of time with his people, mm. okay? But the only thing he did, which is okay, well, is that he would hear from them. And then he would go back and then he would speak Based like it was him. him. As if it was from him, yeah. Well, as long as he was doing yeah, it. Yeah, but he was doing okay. it. And the people loved him for it. Because he was doing what they wanted. But he was talking as if he was thinking for the people. It's okay. It's okay. So he sent them on an errand. Everybody is working for him. Yeah. And he takes the glory, which is okay. We've got to okay. just devise a way to get mm -hmm. Nigerians to yeah. be serious so to and love our country. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So... How do we begin to do that? Because we're wrapping up <laughs> and the time is always short when we start to yeah. discuss. So what do we need to do now? You know, you are still dodging that my 2023 election com conversation. Yes, we will pretend, we will pretend yeah, that yeah, it's we, very important. We will pretend like we did not ask it. Did, uh, you? did you? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but I mean, it's here, really. We, there's really nothing we can do. Um, but if we say we want to start to engage our leaders, because I believe in dialogue, you have to keep talking. What uh, would be the best approach, you know, for us as citizens? Because we have a role to play, whether we like it or not, on the eventual result and the turnout for how the events will happen afterwards in 2023. A lot of people are running away from the country. I mean, I know so many people that said, I'm only coming back in March after the elections. I, I'm not interested in staying in Nigeria. I mean, somebody was talking to me yesterday and said, oh, a family friend of his just moved the wife and the children to the UK just mm -hmm. yesterday, I'd be last month or something like that. So this is the reality. Nigerians are afraid. They feel like a lot of things will happen in this 2020. I don't believe that it will be, it will be violent, but I just want to, like, what would be the best approach, right? Because there's a lot of propaganda happening, don't forget. A lot of people are throwing different stories on social media about different candidates and all of that. All of those things are happening. So how, what would be a smart approach you know, okay. to what's the coming elections and how should Nigerians start to prepare for what is coming? I, I, I think that um, platforms like this have a very critical role to play mm -hmm. because we've got to, there's a lot of noise out there, mm. but we've got to be able to, th you see, those are distractions. Absolutely. They are calculated to be that way, mm. but we've got to find a way to r keep returning the conversation to Back issues to, and mm. things that will yeah. change yeah. Con that are constructive so yes. what you're talking about is focus yeah so they let yeah. them talk about it let them do skits Just let them do stay, we're coming back stay. okay so what have you said about these issues mm. and i think it's very it's not too late it's very important to do it now because mm. even those that are not thinking about it yet mm. they will start thinking about it because ah, they find out that suddenly everybody wants to know the conversation is a must mm. because you can tell the body language and the vibes you're getting, these people are not prepared to sure. discuss anything issue-based. Mm. We'll just do the Everybody usual saying, noise. This right one says, it's my so, turn. This, this one says, we've been marginalized. Mm. This one says, you know, so there's nobody that is really well, dealing with the critical issues this in This is Nigeria. Mm. We're on the brink of whatever. How do we get out of this? Mm. You know, and that's why I said, after a while, we stop playing politics and then we begin to look at governance. Good Absolutely. Governance. Let's yeah. quickly take comments, ladies, because um, we're running out of time. Go ahead. Okay. All we need in Nigeria when it comes to real leadership is nothing but commitment to duty, dedication wholeheartedly, and most of all, the courage to abide by the rules of the land. Finally, leaders must take responsibility. Bobby Kennedy, Jalingo. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you, Bobby. So this one is from Rick Ade. Ade, okay. Ade says, good evening, ladies and gentlemen in the studio. How do we pass a bill fr that from 60 years of age, you don't contest for public <laughs> office? From 65 years, the energy or strength of the gov of governors see. is gone. Hmm. We need a visionary hmm. leader in Nigeria, a leader with a vision of faithfulness to serve, not a missionary leader that wants to enrich their pockets mm -hmm. with public funds. Nigeria will get there if we introduce a contracted agreement of public office contester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the above 60 can just be there as a um, consultant. <laughs> <laughs> we, we use their wisdom for what we need it for. <laughs> Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters. What Elder are you States saying? <laughs> <Hashtag ways. laughs> the leadership Nigerians need from 
time immemorial, Nigerians have never had good leadership. There are selfish people who are interested in occupying an office, but know that they cannot deliver. Nigerians need a leadership that will keep to their promises and give them what they want. Mm. This present government promised heaven and earth and failed us woefully. <laughs> and it is very sad. Yeah. My name is Daniel Ilo, he's regular friend. Thank you, Daniel. So we can't afford, we can't trade our democracy again under an authoritative administrative, I think it's supposed to be administration. We need all, uh, we need an all-around innovation. An in all-round innovation. All-round innovation. Mm -hmm. Okay, all-round innovation aspect of our economic uh, development. This is from Ade Bonlanli Rosalina on YouTube. Okay, so you have the final floor. In okay, two minutes. Um, you remember that quote that um, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed mm. citizens can mm. change the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Mm. Um, someone tweaked it a bit. I was looking at it earlier on, and he said there's a word that is missing, mm. and that word is organized mm. citizens. Mm. Yeah. He said, so it should be never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed, organized citizens can mm. change the world. Mm. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. He said because that, you, that all you need is passion, commitment, good intentions, disruptors, challengers, change will happen, is wrong. That invariably what will happen is noise. Mm. Chaos. Right. So he's saying that we have to remember that it's got to be organized. Mm. So do not underestimate the need for a good mobilization platform. Strategy, okay. Yeah. And there's a need to also orchestrate that. And then we begin to grow these things. It's not going to happen. I mean, nobody's saying it's going to happen like this. Mm. But we've, it has to start. Absolutely. Sorry, with what you are saying now, when you talk about organized, you know what I just see? Structure. Like two years ago when we had this NSAS thing, if we were really organized, we would have made preparations for different things, knowing that some other people will come to disrupt. Mm. So we make arrangements for, you know, eventualities and things will not have gotten out of hand. Mm. Thereby being yeah. more prepared. Yes. Okay, you know why that happened? Mm. Of course. You yeah, know why it was happened. sponsored. Yeah, I know. No, you know why that wasn't a thought? Enlighten us, please. Okay. Because it came... No, right. because at some point, and I also understand it, at some point they felt that they'd been let down by us. Mm. Okay? But what they didn't see is that you need a combination that will move us forward. Yeah. We would have told them yeah. these things yeah. will happen. Yeah. But they didn't see it. Yeah. We've lived with it. Yeah. That's why so I said we need them as consultants. Right. <laughs> So we have to keep being, we have to keep talking and being very strategic about the yeah. conversation. So yeah. it is organized and not um, just uh, making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. We keep on talking in this, yes. <laughs> in the longer short story. But thank you so much, Adeladele, thank you for always, always answering when we call. God bless you. Thank you, Noma. Thank you, Mani. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram at Weishu Africa. TikTok everywhere, just follow us. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation now. Ah, you see this thing about Nigeria, sometimes it gets us drained, mm -hmm. but hey, we can't We're keep, yeah, we can't stop talking about it. We'll keep saying what needs to be said. So if you miss today's call charities again, a good objective of leadership is to help those who are doing poorly to do well and to help those who are doing well to do even better. I mean, leadership is supposed to transform any person, no matter the state you are in, right? So we are looking forward to um, a transformed Nigeria. It will happen, you know, so let's keep hope alive. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.